Hello darlings and welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me, my name is Robin Hahn and about one fifth of the time, I'm dead. I mean, not dead dead. My heart isn't beating, but I don't immediately pass out or fall to the floor. It takes a while for my body to realize I'm being dead, so I just keep kind of walking around. Okay, okay, I'll back up. But before I do, if you were looking for a joyful little corner of the internet where we could discuss opera, disability, queerness, cats, and tea, you have found it. And if you weren't looking for it, you have found it anyway. So go hit that subscribe button and ring the little bell so you never miss a video. If you missed it, I just posted the first video in a three-part series about my disability, which you can check out in the card above, or like after this video. But basically, I have HEDS, Hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, a connective tissue disorder where my body doesn't know how to make good connective tissue in the first place. It's genetic, and I got it from my mama. People with EDS often have a lot of comorbidities, other conditions that come along with or may be caused by the original condition or the source condition, the original sin of the body. People with EDS have so many comorbidities because connective tissue is everywhere in the body and interacts with so many systems. So really, if your body makes connective tissue incorrectly, so much can go wrong. A little wrong or a lot wrong but wrong. For some reason that, as far as I understand, science isn't really too sure about, it is really common to have heart conditions or problems with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. And that's what we're going to go into today. The most common cardiac comorbidity that comes with EDS, in my experience, is usually POTS. Postural Orthostatic Tachycardia Syndrome. Ugh. Let me go get the internet. A condition where a change from lying to standing causes an abnormally large increase in heart rate. It is the most common cardiac comorbidity. I do not have this. I started experiencing the negative symptoms around my EDS around the age of about 17, 18, 17. My memory is really terrible. <laughs> and by the time I was in my about mid 20s, I noticed I was getting lightheaded a lot. Over the course of several years, I began to notice I was spending more and more time horizontal to keep from passing out. I very rarely ever just sort of black out down. I sort of pass out slowly, but apparently doctors think of it as the sort of same thing. Whether you make it to full blackout or not, your body is doing the same thing. So I sort of pass out in slow motion. I will notice that I'm passing out and have enough conscious time to go do something about it. like. Be horizontal. I then also started noticing some really weird sensations. Every once in a while, I think it's pretty normal that most people can hear or feel their heartbeat in their chest. And I started noticing that it would sometimes come in threes not twos. I think I assumed that I just was missing one. It never alarmed me. I don't even think I told a doctor for a really long time. I didn't think it was especially weird. I... I don't know. I didn't think about it, I think. It was normal for me, and therefore I think I assumed it was normal for everyone. And then I started noticing it started to feel like it would stick a little bit. Like it had to get the missing beat out. Like, you know when you're trying to push a really, really heavy door and it starts to go really slowly at first and then you put everything into it and it's still going really slowly and then it eventually starts to go? That's a sensation I would feel in my heart. Like, it was struggling to get the beat out and then it would get it. Again, I didn't really experience any cardiac symptoms that I directly associated with this sensation. It would hurt sometimes, but I had not yet put together lightheadedness and the heavy door in my chest feeling. Over time, I started to feel my lightheadedness would get a little bit more invasive until it started making it really hard for me to get up in the morning. And then it became impossible for me to be vertical for any real length of time within an hour of waking. Now I wake up and lie on my back for about an hour before I get up to essentially let my heart catch up with being conscious. And then I have to sit down for a while, even after I'm able to get up too. And I started noticing that happening before I got my EDS diagnosis. At this point, I was living in Germany and I was starting to notice that sometimes if I started to get lightheaded, just sitting down wouldn't help and I would have to lie down sort of where I was. I think the first time it really sort of dawned on me that something was not actually Okay, I ended up lying on a friend's kitchen floor, staring at her kitchen ceiling. She was working and I was 
staying at her place and making us dinner. And I had been chopping vegetables and I just couldn't keep going. So I was lying on the kitchen floor, staring up at the counter, seeing the knife handle peek out from the edge of the counter and I couldn't go get it. That was weird. But more about that in my next video. So lightheadedness became one of the major symptoms I started asking my doctors about. Once I finally got my diagnosis of HADS and found out about POTS, the normal cardiac comorbidity, and about how a lot of people ended up on the floor a lot of the time, I thought that makes perfect sense. But I never really experienced the heart racing feeling that a lot of people with POTS experience though. I mean, it is pretty normal for there to be variation in symptoms from person to person, so I didn't think too much of that. And I did experience my lightheadedness getting worse on standing, although it would also just sort of happen anytime. But I had noticed by then that my sense of what was happening in my body is not very good, so I just sort of chalked it up to that. I was sent to a cardiologist because there are some cardiac risk factors involved in most types of EDS, including mitral valve prolapse or aortic dissections. If you have one of these conditions, you really should be monitored by a cardiologist. Anyway, I asked my cardiologist about POTS and was given a Holter monitor test and an echocardiogram, I think. A Holter is a heart monitor that you wear slung around your body in a little purse. It's about this big. That includes a cuff around your arm and some electrode looking thingies on your chest. It monitors your heart pretty continuously, I think. And then also, I think once an hour, inflates the cuff automatically. You have a little sheet where at every given time that the cuff inflates by itself, you have to stop and write down what you were doing at the time that the cuff inflated. Um, so it happens all through the night as well. Obviously, if you don't wake up when that happens, that's great and you can just write sleeping later, whatever. It's not a complicated test and it lasts for about 24 hours. It doesn't tell you any of its findings as it takes them. You just have to talk to a doctor about it later. So I did that, it was uneventful, returned it, no problem. I then later went for my echo where technicians essentially, I think it's kind of like an ultrasound. My memory is very bad. I can memorize operas fine, but my own life, no idea. So anyway, I think it's something like a an ultrasound. A technician will sort of scan your heart as it works. Technicians are not supposed to tell you anything about what they see or like react or anything. But I have a very vivid memory of my technician doing my echo and just going under her breath Oh. What? What does that mean? Won't tell me. Okay. Then goes, huh. What? what does that mean? I had no idea, but I also wasn't that alarmed, you know? I knew at this point that I have a connective tissue disorder and that it makes stuff go weird, so whatever. So I set up my next cardiologist appointment to discuss these things. And because she knew that I was wondering if I had POTS, she did a very quick lie down, sit up, stand up test to see how much my heart rate jumped. And then she said this, Oh, your body does do the POTS thing, but it's just not that bad. What is weird is that you do have 19,000 premature ventricular contractions a day. What? That's the correct number of zeros, by the way. <laughs> Gonna use the computer here again. A premature ventricular contraction, or PVC, is a relatively common event where the heartbeat is initiated by Purkinje fibers in the ventricles that rather than by the sinoatrial node. PVCs may cause no symptoms or may be perceived as a skipped beat or felt as palpitations in the chest. There's not much more detailed information here or anywhere more reliable than Wikipedia on the internet about having this many PVCs. There's no name given for having this as a condition and no reference made to having them in anything like these numbers. There are lots of vague causes given, from myocardium damage to stress, and no mention of why people with EDS or other genetic conditions would have them at all. What is clear is that multiple PVCs are heckin' concerning to doctors. Essentially, as far as I understand it, to create a normal heartbeat, your brain sends an electrical signal to one of the four chambers of your heart. It always starts in the same one, that's the normal one. I forget what it's called. But what's happening in me is that about a fifth of the time, my brain is sending an extra electrical signal to the wrong chamber of my heart, which cancels out the correct signal and makes my heart sort of flop around like a dead fish rather than beat. So instead of going, it's going. I do also several times a day have two or even three extra electrical signals going to all of the chambers of my heart. My heart essentially flops around in my rib cage like a dead fish. There is no word for this as a condition. Apparently I'm too weird for that. But like 8,000 of these a day is considered rare and weirdly high, and I have double that, so... 
So yeah, about a fifth of the time, I have no heartbeat because my heartbeat gets cancelled out. And then my heart just stops. And I'm dead. I am told that this number of PVCs a day leaves me at elevated risk for cardiac muscle impairment and heart failure. Hooray! But I'm on heart medication now to try to prevent that and to mitigate the symptoms of not having blood pumping in my body. <laughs> but to be honest, it's not really helping a ton and I should probably contact my cardiologist and like, tell her that. This symptom is probably my most consistently disabling as it really prevents me from working in the morning and if I were to push my wake up time earlier, I would have to go to bed so early as to not really be able to do nighttime shows. So you understand where the problem was. I can't really function or be vertical at all until about 11 a.m. at the earliest. I can work up to a little earlier for a couple days at a time, but I get some body blowback if I try. I do get better as the day goes on, which is great because most opera coachings and rehearsals and shows happen at night, so yay me. I really chose the right profession. <laughs> It also hits at completely random moments, so I can be in the middle of a conversation with you and then suddenly completely lose the ability to think or stand straight because there is no blood in my head. Sorry in advance if that ever happens to me while I'm talking to you. Again, as I mentioned in my first video, pretty much any time I have to sing, including rehearsals, coachings, and shows, I have enough adrenaline running through my body to counteract this and allow my heart to beat properly and me not to get super faint. But where there is an adrenaline rush, there is always an adrenaline crash. And it does usually mean that when I'm done, I do have to crash on the floor later at home where no one sees. So what I'm trying to say is this. It's okay if your symptoms or comorbid diagnoses don't match the quote-unquote norm of your condition. That doesn't invalidate your diagnosis, what you're feeling, or your identity as a chronically ill person. Unlike the majority of people with EDS who have cardiac symptoms, I don't have POTS. I have this nameless, ultra-rare heart condition where a thing that should be a single event in a normal person's life, like once, happens to me all the freaking time. Interestingly, it mimics POTS, and my heart rate does spike a little too high when I stand up. And also the symptom management strategies I have for my day-to-day -day life are a lot like Potsy's strategies. But nevertheless, I am not the norm. I am the exception. And that's fine. If a doctor is trying to tell you that you can't have X condition because you don't have Y symptom or Z comorbidity, they could easily be wrong. Not every condition presents exactly the same way in every single person. What I'm getting at is that if you think you're being dismissed or not being heard by your healthcare provider or medical professional because you don't fit some preconceived notion they have about what a patient should present with, I feel you. I see you. You're valid. And keep pushing for the diagnosis and care you deserve. But by the same token, take all the time you need. Advocating for yourself in a system designed to actively work against you is exhausting and it's okay to take breaks just know that the chronic illness community is always here to support you and are behind you when you're ready to try again there you go that's the story of my heart and how it flops around pretty uselessly inside my chest if you have a weird heart thing or even a weird body thing you're not alone if you've dealt with a weird number of pvcs please do let me know down below i'd love to hear about it i assume i haven't heard the last of what this weird heart thing means for my body and if you have any wisdom to share i would love to hear it if you'd like to stick around please do hit that subscribe button and ring the little bell keep the comment section full of joy and light and i will see you in my next video and about one fifth of the time started to become oops losing my curls my heart sort of flops around in my chest like a dead fish and if you'd like to stink around stink around 